Hey, this is the Autotrix podcast, where we will be discussing all things Autotrix, from learning, the Autotrix community, to even interviewing some important people in the Autotrix world, all to help you on your journey to being a better Autotrix developer. In our third Autotrix podcast, we talked to fellow ace, James Dunkley. We talked to him about how he got started in Autotrix and his perspectives on topics such as building out Autotrix add-ins and macros. We talk about the Autotrix community, as well as, now that we're in December, advent of code and how to solve using base a so stay tuned in for this amazing interview hi i'm chris goodman and i'm an ultra x ace and innovator and i'm joshua burkow also an ultra x ace and innovator welcome to ultra tricks thanks jane for for joining today really really uh, love having you on the on the yeah. first Love interview, this is uh, this would be podcast three for us, but uh, you're, you're our first interview guest. So if this goes completely to hell, we won't put it on you. We, we, we'll <laughs> I have to accept some responsibility. I think if it all goes wrong, but that'll be fun. Yeah, I hope it can be the first of many instead. Um, yeah, right, right, right. As opposed to the first of the last. <laughs> of, so like, I, so, sounds like the beginning of a good Scottish movie is like the first of the last. <laughs> the, uh, so, James, I think it, just to help all the users and, you know, a lot of people know who you are. They know of you, maybe. I think it'd be cool to, like, hear from you, like, how long you've been using Alteryx and, you know, when did you become an ace and anything that's interesting about kind of your Alteryx journey. Sure, of course. So, I think... Um, my journey is slightly different in some because I come from a developer background. That's my, my day job is development, not data in any way. Um, but came to Alteryx in the relatively traditional, the company got Tableau, the data wasn't quite in the right shape. We got introduced to Alteryx by the information lab at one of Chris Love's sessions on Alteryx for Tableau users, had a bit of a play, kind of thought, okay. I'm a developer, didn't see a huge perk to it, but got persuaded we should try it by the guy who was in favor of Tableau at the time. So we got it in. Um, I agreed to embed in it. My job at the time had both a lot of primarily development. So I was doing front office risk development for a hedge fund, and that entailed a lot of ad hoc requests. So those became well, can I do them quicker with Alteryx? And yeah, started to do them, started to learn that they were quicker. So I guess that's probably for about November 2014, I think roughly, first oh. got exposed to Alteryx and started using it in the January the next year we got a license. Um, by six months in, we were running billion dollar rescale programs through Alteryx because we yeah. proved it worked and you could do yeah. some quite impressive stuff in it. Right. Um, and then played more and more. The community was nascent at the time. There wasn't much of a community back then. There was a bit of, bit of life on Twitter and things like this. Right. And I started kind of playing around with the edges of all tricks, did a couple of blogs on it and got the first, by first blog, I got a response back from Ned Harding. So it was kind of like, yeah. oh, wow. wow. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've, I've made it in life. <laughs> it's like, that, that's quite cool. And yeah. had a, I had a video call with him early on and seeing how some of the insides of all tricks worked, which was a kind of tease of, wow, this thing's cool. Um, yeah. And then I became an ace at the London 2016 um, Inspire. So it was the first European Inspire. That was a hell of an Inspire for me. I spent yeah. most of the time chatting with Ned and doing some more fun games, playing with it. Um, became an ace and won the Grand Prix. Um, so have a giant cup <laughs> I, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you actually did the Grand Prix. Yeah, no, that was that was uh, an interesting one. It was a quite different different style Grand Prix today, right, right. today but it was a lot of fun. You, um, do you think it says was a uh, more or less intense as the uh, the ones that we have today? Oh, it was quite intense. There was there was. We did the qualification rounds were all on remote WebEx as the usual way they were. And then we had the three of us com competitors on the stage. But London that year was a lot smaller than, particularly smaller than the US ones, but actually smaller than the, EU, the general Europe ones. So it was a little bit more intimate affair than some of the big ones. I, I'm, I'm interested though in your, your perspective around um, coming to Alteryx as a developer. 
and and how you how you kind of approached it because you know there's a lot of people come into Alteryx from all different perspectives but there, there's a subset of people that come in as you know developers during their day jobs and and they you know they have the object oriented background they have the coding background and so was there anything that caught your eye when you first got Alteryx was it was it purely that it was simpler or was it you know did it actually offer more than you could code or what, what was the catch for you so i think the first thing was it the first thing you've got a barrier to get over developers see visual visual design languages no. that they appear childish in some senses you know <laughs> I, do, I do scratch programming with my kids the first reaction is why would i do that oh, got a yeah. programming language and very much the first reaction was there's very little in here that I couldn't do myself with code. And that's still in many ways true to certain areas where that's not true, but there's a lot of areas where actually you can do it just as easily in code, but not as quickly. So if you, I, I agreed to embed for the two weeks. I said, okay, we'll get the two week trial. We'll see if it actually does anything. And all of those ad hoc requests became quicker. So the querying the operational database, that became an Alteryx workflow. Answering the traders' questions that you need the answer in 20 seconds, that became an Alteryx workflow. And you, you start answering those questions and then you start thinking, well, actually, how far can we push it? So then the more important production flows that you would have built with development tools and often they mature to a development tool, they would become stuff that you consider doing in Alteryx. And I think the big win, which was useful for my role at the time um, was very much explaining to the business user. Yeah. So if I go and show them, I mean, I'm this .NET developer at that time. So if I go and open up Visual Studio Pro on them, show them the C-sharp code, they sit in the corner twitching like something. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. But actually, if I showed the investor relations, here's where your investor names are, here's where the fun names are. Hey, look, it all comes out one side. She could see it. She could understand it. And sure, she couldn't build it. That wasn't what she was trying to do. But she could understand and agree, this is what we wanted to do. Makes sense. And there was a, there was some good wins there that became very useful. And particularly as you learn to productionize things, you learn to build in some of the development tools into all tricks so you could do more and more powerful things. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to touch on that. You know, late, later on in the in the. The podcast, but um, there was yeah. a rumor going around that you know you you don't use Alteryx at work, or is that is that completely false? And uh... <laughs> regrettably, my new role, it's true. Um, I moved, I, I left the hedge fund a few years ago and moved yeah. into work for Scott Logic. So I'm a technical architect at Scott Logic. We build custom software for a variety of companies um, and I've done lots of work in financial services and public sector for both home office and the foreign office these days um, which has been great fun and a lot of that is building scalable architectures that work at national scale and that's some interesting challenges and some design work some coding work a lot, a lot of discussion work but actually the, the kind of data analytics piece doesn't fit in that much to a lot of my day job. That being said, data's everywhere. So yes. you get a bit of kind of, well, how would you shape this? How would you present this? And BI or MI is everywhere. So everyone's always like, well, even the systems you build, you have to feed the data out into other technologies that people can then use to report right. on that. And it, it seems like you're, you're uh, just enough addicted to Alteryx that you couldn't let it go. So you keep doing it as a... <laughs> I keep it checking over. It's it's a lot of fun, and the the community is great. I mean, I think the the oh, like, all lucky to know the Ace community. They're a great group of people. I've got a lot of actual friends who work for Alterx. I'm still in touch with Ned a lot, and yeah. that and the community of people you deal with and chat to, they what made it fun. And honestly, that was part of why I left the fun space. Was I remembered Alterx reminded me that actually I love being a developer and doing that stuff. Yeah. And the bits of it I'd kind of forgotten. And it was like, well, let's go and do the stuff I love and have a lot of fun. And Absolutely. that was what you gave me. Um, James, um, it's now December. Um, I think kind of on the community, lots of people are getting excited, kind of counting down to December um, for Advent of Code. Um, so do you want to just explain what Advent of Code is, 
Advent of Code is a great thing created by a guy called Eric Wassel. Um, apologies if I said his name wrong. Um, he creates 25 puzzles. He says technically includes Christmas Day, so it's not quite the traditional 24 days of Advent. Um, he creates 25 puzzles with a story linking them all together and um, set around a Christmas theme. And they're all programming related. So they're from programming concepts. They not they should in theory be solvable by anyone with a reasonable grasp of a programming language. Um, and they but they get harder and harder and build up bigger and bigger. And you get an opportunity to kind of sharpen your development skills, shall we say? And I think it was um, Adam um, at Alteryx suggested in. Twitter, why don't we have a go doing um, Advent of Code in Alteryx? Um, so Alteryx isn't the programming language. It's got some serious limitations in comparison to a programming language if you're going to try and do these things. Um, but it's near enough that most problems that you can solve in a programming language, you can solve in Alteryx. So Adam suggested, why don't we try and do it in um, Advent of Code in Alteryx? So 2008, 2018, sorry, more wrong decade. Um, <laughs> We started off trying to have a go that year. Um, and I think many of us got quite a long way through it. And the first year, it got harder and harder. There were some real horrific challenges to do in Alteryx. Um, but there were some ones that were really easy. So I remember I was on a train ride with one of the other developers at Scologic. He was doing it in Java. It took him the train ride. It took me five seconds because um, it was one that particularly suited Alteryx. No. I, five days later, I had a problem that took about three weeks. Chris will remember the first yeah. ones where we day nine of 2018, I think it was, um, where we spent weeks trying to solve it in Alteryx. Um, and it took him about an hour in Java and about three weeks in Alteryx. Oh, but it's, a good, it's a good fun set of challenges, much like the community set of challenges. They make you think. But yeah. unlike the community challenges, they're not things that are necessarily suited to all tricks. So you're going to have to yeah. scratch your head. You're going yeah. to have to think around and see if you can find a way to solve it, which may not be obvious to say the least. In terms of solving it, um, so we've kind of got a leaderboard for all tricks users and you've come up with the concept of base A for solving it. Do you want to just explain what base A is? So these days, Alteryx is, um, what's their what's their fish things? Code friendly and code free or something like that. Some slogan along those lines. They've got embedded R support. They've got embedded Python support. There's been support for C++ and C Sharp programming in it for forever as well. Those felt like cheating. So the idea was base A, you had to use almost what came out of the box. So yeah. if it was... If you got a clean install of Alteryx and you installed it and you didn't go near the Python tool or the R tool, what could you do? So you'll be back to the, the core tools, the original set of tools. You've got the data science tools these days as well, though they generally won't help you very much in um, the app and the code stuff, but you can work with those. And it just stretches seeing how far you can stretch the core and also showing you how fast the core is and reminding of how yeah. much power because there's an awful lot of insane power inside that one yeah. and we set up a leaderboard so there's a private leaderboard that i think the code's posted on community and it's on my blog if people want to join um that has people who've agreed to do it to that restriction um <laughs> and we, we just, there's certainly some some you certainly been some people show up who weren't doing it anyone who completes every puzzle did not do it in Alteryx was our conclusion one year. Um, and we've had a few few cases where it's led to innovation, where we've come up with clever ways to do things and stuff like this, which is yeah. always, always And I think that's one of the great bits, because like this this year, we've, everyone's like posting on community, they're sort of like doing screenshots of their solutions. Um, and it's just seeing those quicker ways. Um, so James, I was speaking to you on like even challenge one, I was like, a bit of workflow, it runs in about 40 seconds. I don't feel like it's optimal. And it was like, I'm probably over-engineering something. And like, I think it was like, I was doing some cross-tabbing or transposing and summarizing the data. And you were like, oh, you could just like do a filter and say, is column three greater than column two? And then filter it out. And it's like, run times then go down into like 0.3 of a second. So yeah. 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 
No, it's, it's much like the community. The early challenges on the community, I remember looking at them, and one of the things that was great was you to compare about what other people did. And hopefully we can capture that spirit again this year of we're going to try and do some posts showing different solutions to each day to what people have done. Because I think it's really good to highlight that there's, all tricks always shows there's more than one way to do things. And in the early days, that will be true. I think in the later days, if we get a solution for some of the later ones based on past years, we'll be happy. Um, yeah. I, that, that's, I guess, the one word of warning on all tricks in the advent of code is it gets hard, fast. <laughs> can get very hard very fast the last last year's puzzles didn't particularly suit all tricks at all so it got very hard and the, there are a lot of us are traumatized from from the <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's interesting james like the 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 parallels to with the weekly challenges first of all like it, you know it's these this concept of these bite-sized challenges that um don't put someone they put them close enough to to jumping the the edge and and being done with it to but but keeping them from the edge and saying hey you know what here's a good challenge for you to learn um I, and i think what really rounds it out is the fact that we all share right so you, you know when you post something or chris posts something um you know or, or nicole johnson with her her excitement and her emotion in there like it gets everybody into it and it it pushes these people that maybe hadn't thought about, you know, doing these sort of challenges because, you know, on the surface, when you first, I, I remember this two years ago when I went to Advent and Code, it's all, it's all in, um, you know, screen code. Like it's all, you know, it's very, uh, you know, it, it's a programmer's dream, you know, uh, interface and, you know, very different from Alteryx, right? Where we, we got little pictures everywhere. So uh, that was the first hurdle to get through. It's like, okay, how, how do I use this thing? But like, once you get into it, the, the, the challenges are fun. They're, they're uh, relatively start out easy, like you said. But uh, I, I think the, the whole base A concept is genius in the sense that it, it, it takes and forces you to really think about this because you know, it would be easy for, you know, a coder or a programmer to say, okay, I'm just going to pop this out to code, write it in Python, and then pipe it back in. But um, we'll have to see how far we get this year. But I, I'm curious, we'll have to figure out a way as well, when we get to the really hard ones, how we can, uh, you know, partner up and try to try to solve these things together. Because like you, I, I don't know if I have two weeks to, to, <laughs> no. to, to work. Well, I think the, the 2018 one led to some great innovations. I mean, it wasn't based yeah. on, but right. moved on to creating, in order to solve some of them, we introduced the idea of variables into all tricks, which was a really fun, it won't work well with AMP at all, well, it won't work with AMP at all, but it worked with E1 that you could create a variable and we did a load of formula extensions to allow us to solve some of the problems that were otherwise insoluble. And I, I know Patrick Diggins a big a big fan of the variable system we built and it is does add a whole new dimension of power that all tricks didn't have prior to it, so to speak. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll have to see how what comes out of it. So um you know kind of sw switching gears just a little bit to talk about kind of add-ins in this this world. Um I, I think you you know this but you're pretty well known amongst kind of the developer community around the Alteryx. um specifically you know if we talk about those formula add-ins that you, you've developed abacus and then some of the other the the other stuff you have out on, on github um which we need to make sure we'll, we'll get from you and, and put it in the show notes for, for later so you can go out to your uh github site but um i really just want you to uh kind of talk about that what got you started um what was that like an a, a really challenging task for you no it wasn't really challenging at first it was a, it, it's like, again it goes back to many moons ago back in the dark ages of working in the hedge fund um i one of the things that really annoyed me on the first version of all tricks um was I, loads of things when you've got strings you have to do starts with ends with or contains and they didn't exist in Alteryx at the time. Um, and I found, I think on Adam Riley's blog, a mention around how you could create an XML function. So my first ever Alteryx extension was uh, starts with, ends with, 
in contains that I put as XML function extensions. And I've got a tweet from Ned going, cool idea, we'll add that to the product. And then the next version of the product had those functions in it. So they graduated, if you like, yeah. from the abacus straight into it. But it proved that you could push the limit yeah. and you could make it easier. Um, and again, the performance, if you don't leave the formula tool is insane. It's yeah. so, so quick. So if you want to do just a, a standard example, but I want an inverse normal distribution function and I want that answer for 10 million rows, if you punch out to arm and punch back in again, you're going to cry before it comes back. Yeah. If you put a C++ call as a formula function of give the normal inverse function, it's instant. It just plows through it as if it was a core bit of Alteryx and finishes instantaneously. And the scale of the performance you get and this is, again, goes back to the base A concept. The performance you can achieve with that is astounding. And it may, I, they grew from there. So I needed to be able to price options, hedge funds, they trade options. You need black shells calculations and things like that. So it's very hard to do if you haven't got normal and all this stuff available. So we built out some of the core kind of statistical stuff. Right. And then it's the bits that were obviously missing. Um, I always used to, I, I, mit, I hate mit the not having an if null function. I hate writing if A is null, then something else A. And so add an if null function in little things like that. Just sure. they make the developer experience more pleasant. Again, early versions of the date time libraries were stuff like there's no year function. Why? Um, yeah. There is now there's date time year because they didn't want to call it year, but it's like, but years are shorter form and it's less time. Yeah. <laughs> I like you. So, I mean, it really sounds like you were, you were really out to scratch your own itch, right? You just had these, these uh, formulas that you could do in, in coding and you, you found a way to build them into an XML function and, and embed them. Yeah. Um, what, what was that experience like when you first started figuring out, was it, was it pretty seamless in the sense that, um, you know, if Adam Riley or whoever said, hey, this is how you do it, and you just went and did that? Or did you, yeah. is this something that um, took you two particularly, years? Particularly, so the XML discovery wasn't too bad. Uh, so I, once you found out how to do it, and the C++ ones, at the time, the documentation was, oh, and still is, pretty atrocious. It was, the formula add-ins extensions were neglected, and they hadn't been touched, because not many people knew they were there, in all right. honesty. Um, a lot of people didn't know you could even do such a thing. So I found a lot of some surreal bugs that I couldn't solve. Um, and I was lucky that I'd made the contact with Ned and we actually, we had some debugging sessions and genuinely found bugs in the engine of how it interacted with the formula add-ins at that point. And a few of them were fixed and that made it work. Um, there are still limitations because it's not an SDK they give as much love to as they should. Um, you can't do it with AMP at all. It's not supported. Even the XML extensions aren't supported anymore, which is a big, a big frustration at the moment. Hopefully it'll get added in. And you can't tell when you're being previewed. So the, which is a real problem if you're trying to validate your input because you get sent through a zero in an empty string as test values to see what you do. And zero can be an invalid input. So if you return invalid errors, then it rejects your validation. And there's no way from the SDK to know that you're in the validation step, whereas the first party formula functions know that. And there's a few, th there's a few limitations, but they're not ones that are that hard. And a lot of the old SDKs, so this includes the .NET one for building tools, and the C++ one for building tools, the debug experience is brilliant. If you run, if you're developing one and you debug it, Alteryx loads in a way such that Visual Studio can pause and you have know, breakpoints inside your code when the engine's running. So it runs the engine in a different way, allowing you to debug it, which the Python tools, they don't have that capability, unfortunately. Um, they need it, and debugging experience is one of the big problems with the Python tools in my eyes, that the older ones, the developer experience is good. It was certainly stuff that Ned and his team had been using. You could tell they were used SDKs because they worked as first-party tools should work. 
Shall we jump onto um, community now then? So in terms of like community, so you talked about sort of when you got into Alter-X, um, the community is quite nascent, like kind of what's changed and kind of what's great about the community um, and why do you so, engage with it? Um, so when the community started, it was, I mean, it, was a, it was a small space at the time. I mean, number of Alter-X users has gone up and up. There were, but very quickly, it felt like a friendlier version of the kind of Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow has a certain tendency to be less friendly than it might be anymore these days. Uh, the kind of, you've asked a stupid question is the first comment you get. Um, I, I, you don't get that in the Alteryx community. It's a friendly space where if you ask anything, people will try and help you. Um, there's a lot of people around and you know, we all know the great Mark Frisch. He will jump in and answer most questions. Um, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And there would often be some really interesting challenges would come up. And a bit like I always like living on the edge of trying to see what you can push and learn and solving somebody else's geospatial stuff when I know nothing about geospatial oh. forces you to learn the geospatial tools and then you're like oh cool so that's how you do it uh, try this oh yeah that works great and you, you get into bits that you just wouldn't otherwise touch which is an awesome way to learn and if you can explain it clearly you understand it and, yeah totally agree. Uh, particularly from like blogging and so forth it forced me to really admit that i knew stuff and understand that i knew it and prove to show others this is the way to do things um you really have to find all those corners and dust them out to make sure you understood it and i think the real value of community is answering questions in a way that you know it doesn't just give the man a fish it teaches them how to fish so they next yeah. time they come to a problem they realize what they've learned and i think that's a really good thing that does happen in the autoex community a lot I think there's a little bit of just competition for points and solves, which I'm not a big proponent of. I mean, I've got plenty of solves and plenty of points on my profile, but I'm more of the, you're better off taking a bit longer, teach yeah, them yeah. Read, how did you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say in terms of community, like one of the things that I remember was James actually you solving one of the things that I posted. So there was, it was probably, very early days so I've been using Alteryx for three years now um, it's probably early days I was kind of like stuck at work kind of going I really want to do this I'm sort of 90% of the way there but there's just a missing bit that kind of makes it seamless um, so it was anonymizing string fields um, okay. and I think I posted it and about five minutes later I think you responded and then Jesse responded like straight after and it was doing things of like okay that's solved one problem. There's this bit now that I want it to do. And I think that's where I saw that you could change XML values um, like dynamically. I was like, never come across that before, but actually it's quite useful. Um, and it's that sort of thing that you sort of saying, like, don't just give an answer, kind of add some more value to it so you can teach people how to fish. And then it's like, I've now learned how to edit XML and then kind of that adds a lot more functionality into it. Nope. I think particularly if you're going to give a, de uh, a technically advanced answer, um, you need to help. So, I mean, the, the classic example is these days I'm pretty comfortable with regex. When I started using Alteryx, I hated the damn thing. It's, uh, as, one of, as one of my colleagues said, it's write once, read never, delete immediately. Um, oh. It was a very true statement on regex in my view as well at that time. But actually, from working through problems in regex in the community a bit, you learn it. And if you're going to give an answer which is based on it, if you don't explain the expression, it's of no use to them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no way they're going to be able to use it again. But actually, if you take a bit of time and show them why you're thinking that way and why it's better than just trying to do string splitting and all this stuff, you yeah, can yeah. give them a lot more help. Yeah. I, I had a monumental discovery. You know, yes, yesterday we were working on the advent of code and we, we needed to split by single characters. And I literally could do it in regex faster than any other tool, right? Yep. So that's when I got to a point where I was like, "All right, I, I think I got this. I think that uh, regex was kind of uh, my 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 new not a love hate relationship anymore." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> I can't remember that there was something I was trying to get the regex to do where I managed to get the Autrix regex engine to complain at me that it was too complicated and it wasn't. Oh, <laughs> right. I to see that. Uh, it, <laughs> it had both forwards and backwards looking stuff going on that it, the engine just went, no. <laughs> 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 James, like kind of uh, one thing I didn't put in here, but I'd love for you to rattle off so users could have it is kind of how can they contact you, you know, how, where are you on the on the uh, the community and GitHub and that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah if anyone wants to reach out to me, um, I'm jdunkley79 on the Alteryx community because I believe the jdunkley account is associated with me, but on my old work email address, I have no access to that anymore. Um, on Twitter and LinkedIn and everything else, I'm just jdunkley. Um, and feel free to reach out to me there on all of those. And likewise on GitHub, you'll find all of the formula add-ins that I've written over time, all my advent of code solutions, um, and also any other junk I feel like developing. So there's some interesting random experiments we've done with Altrix as a REF server and so forth on there. Um, and that's all on GitHub with username of Jay Dunkley again. Perfect. Hey, thank you so much, James. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, no, really good fun. Nice to chat to you both. And absolutely. You. Hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, let's see how far we can get with Advent of Code, yeah? Yeah, if anyone can get 50 stars, that will be an achievement. Oh, and, on for it. <laughs> uh, I think I'm at two now. Is that, is that good? <laughs> Uh, 2018, I, I got to 25. If I can get to 25 again, I will be quite happy. Yeah. I love it. Hey, thank you so much, James. No, most welcome, James. James. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for watching. Click here to watch more and here to subscribe.